Put a roll call, please. Roll call. Steve Babbitt. Here. Paul Amaral. Here. Sarah. Sue. Here. And Jimmy. Yep. Okay, the purpose of the meeting tonight is to discuss the Gannon RFP. So as a start, I think I'll turn it over to Attorney Lamana to tell us uh, how we got to this point and a few things about the RFP, and then we'll open it up to questions and see where it goes from there. Thank you very much. As you know, in, in 2013, uh, we were ordered by the Inspector General to go out to bid for the RFP for the operation of uh, the golf course, the bar concession, uh, snack shack, and pro shop. Uh, we put that out to bid uh, for a five-year lease, got permission from the City Council to enter into a five-year lease. That lease expires December 31st of this year. Uh, in the anticipation of the lease expiring, the Mayor engaged the services of the Collins Center out of UMass to review the existing contract, uh, look at the old RFP, make some recommendations on how that RFP could be uh, made better to protect the city, uh, and possibly uh, obtain a greater number of bidders and hopefully it's to, to maximize uh, uh, the, the revenue that uh, the city and the park commissioners have been able to uh, been able to generate. Of the approximately two, over two million dollars that we received from the, the 2013 lease, my understanding uh, over a million dollars has gone back to the courts. Uh, 700, uh, little, little under seven hundred thousand dollars remains in a account dedicated for future use at Gannon. Speaking with Commissioner Hall, I believe that uh, another $300,000 worth of work is being contemplated at this time uh, uh, with bid documents going out. Uh, only $250,000 were taken from the Gannon receipts to balance the city budget. And that occurred in 2017 when the city received an award from the JLMC uh, mandating uh, fire uh, retroactive pays. So to date, th those are the only funds that have uh, been utilized to balance the city budget. Uh, the Collins Center met with the uh, current incumbents, uh, Mr. Carter, representative from the GBA, uh, the food vendor, uh, to get some insight and inputs. Met with uh, Commissioner Hall, the CFO, uh, Michael Bertino, uh, representative, representatives of the Law Department, uh, Michael Donovan, and just a 90 page document with probably 150 pages of attachments that are before you. Uh, probably have 10 significant uh, changes from the past. Uh, RFP from 2013. This new RFP calls for any expenses over 10, uh, under $10,000 will be borne by the bidder, uh, the successful bidder. The 2013 uh, RFP and 2013 lease uh, call for anything 5000 or under to be the responsibility of the bidder. Uh, so that is an increase of $5,000. That was made a direct recommendation from Michael Donovan with increased cost. Uh, this RFP will have some uh, more stringent financial reporting uh, that requires uh, audited financial reports on an annual basis. Uh, but in year three of this five-year lease, and it is again being offered as a five-year lease to December 31st of 2023, uh, year three, a full audit by a certified public accountant into all act activities on the course, including the concessions. I note that this is uh, a, a recommendation from the Inspector General's office from a report they issued in 2009 where they audited uh, every municipal, uh, reviewed every municipal golf course contract and determined uh, there were some golf course courses where cities were getting one dollar for the last 80 years. So they made a, a detailed 20-page report and uh, they thought it was very important to, to have at least one of the five years to have a full audit. Uh, the, I, the thought of having five years of a full certified audit it, uh, in all likelihood, is probably not necessary. One and two would be a cost that borne by the, the successful bidder that would probably just result in a, in a lesser bid to the city of Lynn. Um, recognizing that this bid as, as is going to be uh, out to, to, for the public to, to obtain tomorrow at 8.30, uh, it was highly unlikely that a, a non-incumbent would be able to bid on this uh, project. Uh, anyone that was interested in, uh, in not so much on the golf side, they would have time until March or April when the golf season starts. But particularly on the restaurant bar side, it would be very difficult for a non-incumbent to uh, be notified the first week of December that they were going to be a successful bidder uh, to be able to hire staff, potentially replace all the equipment in, in the bar that are non-fixtures, uh, potentially, uh, potentially have to buy appliances, silverware, and hire staff and bar manager. We have pushed the, uh, the, the required start time to March 1st of 2019. That does not mean that the bidder could not, uh, is not able to start on January 1st, uh, but it does give uh, people that are interested uh, an opportunity they would have a three-month window after being awarded the bid to, 
take whatever necessary actions that they needed to take um, in order to have the restaurant bar uh, up and running by March 1st. There was a consensus that uh, the 2013 bid may have been too restrictive and that any menu prices uh, and changes would have to go before this park commission. In 2013, there was a stated desire to try to keep the prices of uh, adult beverages and, and food prices consistent with what it had been prior to 2013, recognizing that that may be a limit to the amount of, of the bid if you're forced to essentially serve uh, food and, and drinks at prices that may have been appropriate in 2008. There is no such requirement that the Park Commission uh, has to approve all, all, uh, all price increases. We've attached probably seven or eight sample menus, including three uh, pub uh, pubs and Lynn, Rollies, uh, Lazy Dog, Tony's Pubs, uh, and, and menu prices is prices that uh, are considered optimal. If you're going much above that, those prices that uh, Lynn patrons are, are expected to pay, uh, that would result in a lower score. We also, in addition to those three Lynn restaurants, we attached uh, three or four other uh, golf course menu uh, as, as what we would, uh, the Park Commission would like to see. Uh, is uh, consistent with the concession uh, moving forward starting in 2019. So there, there is no stated desire uh, to keep prices uh, deliberately low. It will be a business decision that uh, whoever the successful bidder uh, is to, to determine what those, th those values uh, uh, prices should be. Uh, this bid gave greater flexibility on the hours of uh, the food business. Uh, over the last five years I've received a lot of criticism that uh, mandating uh, an opening at 6.30 in the morning uh, uh, may, one, not be profitable, and two, uh, does not get, uh, allow us to obtain the optimal bid amount. Uh, it, uh, we have recommended times, a half hour before first tea time and at sunset, but uh, there's, there, these are recommended times, so this will offer the board hopefully multiple bids to review and make a determination uh, what, uh, based on the menu and the hours of operation that are being proposed, what this commission uh, believes is, is in the best interest of the city. Uh, I would know five years ago a decision was made uh, to have the review committee to consist of uh, three city solicitors around the Common Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, that was done with some concerns that the Inspector General's office had that uh, they believed that this bid wouldn't have been open, uh, that uh, there might be favoritism to the incumbent at that time. Uh, to avoid any appearance of uh, conflict, the, the city in 2013 put together the, the committee, evaluation committee of uh, three out of city lawyers to make that ultimate decision. Uh, this go around, the Park Commission will retain the ultimate scoring system. So you'll see in the, in the bid itself about 15 different uh, evaluation criteria where you, you will make a decision if it's highly advantageous, advantageous, uh, or disadvantageous. Uh, you'll rank them each on individual, score, uh, individual scores. So every one of the ranking systems that were in the 2013 bid uh, remain in this bid today. Uh, some uh, few new ones were added. Uh, the ability of the, of the successful bidder uh, to demonstrate a, a willingness and a commitment to expand the bar and restaurant to non-golfers. Uh, there's a general feeling that uh, so long as non-golfers are not utilizing the restaurant and the bar, uh, there is a potential that the, the revenues are not, as, uh, not being maximized. Everything I've talked, spoke to from golfers and uh, where I've spoken to uh, the Collins Center, there's a belief that uh, the golf side of the operation is, is, is maximizing its profits. Uh, it's very well run. The play is, 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 uh, is, is, uh, is fast. Uh, there were very few complaints on, on the golf side of the operations, but there was a general feeling that uh, if, if the bid, which was $425,000 for the last four years, if there was a way for that bid to go up, it would be to try to encourage uh, successful bidders to make that commitment to have non-golfers utilize uh, this more often, and hopefully in hand-in-hand in hand with the ability to raise prices without, uh, without pot commission uh, vote every time they want to go up a quarter for a Bud Light or whatever the case may be. Um, one new component here is speaking with inspectional services, the snack shack does not meet the state sanitary code. Uh, and uh, in, in good conscience, the special services and, and it would be unlawful. They could not let that snack shack uh, operate for another year. So this bid uh, does uh, mandate the successful bidder to do whatever is necessary to make the snack shack become uh, compliant with the state sanitary code. Uh, it does state that uh, at the conclusion of the lease, they, whatever they've, what has been done will remain the property of the city. 
Uh, I do expect that uh, the bid will be adjusted downward, uh, but with the hope that uh, even with a downward bid, uh, this would be uh, uh, spread out over five years and that there, there would not be a significant deduction as a result of uh, the requirement. Talking to golfers, uh, the Snack Shack, I believe, is a lucrative part of the business up there, and it probably would behoove the successful bidder to be able to operate that in order to maximize profits. So it, uh, hopefully it will be a win-win for the city that we'll have a sanitary Snack Shack that you don't have to worry about being sick, uh, and profits will continue to be uh, continue to be strong. Uh, there was appeared to be some confusion in this lease whether subcontractors were required to uh, adhere to all the, the uh, all of the uh, provisions of the lease, uh, this disagreement specifically calls for the subcontractors to acknowledge that they have read the, if, if a subcontractor is in fact going to be utilized, uh, they will acknowledge that they have read the, the lease, uh, they are bound by all the financial reporting requirements and all the other requirements, um, and they will also be signatories to the lease. So there will be no question of what uh, the, uh, every sub-tenant uh, and subcontractor is going to be responsible for, it will be whatever is in this 91-page document. Um, those are essentially the 10 changes. There were some, uh, some minor changes, some discussion about whether smoking should be permitted. My opinion is that smoking in any location where there's employees, uh, this would be at the restaurant and the, and the patio, is unlawful under state law, so that has been clearly spelled out. Um, maintenance obligations, as I said, anything under $10,000 would be the responsible, uh, responsibility of the, of the bidder and the city, anything above $10,000. Uh, we do have a language in here uh, that the city acknowledges that the sprinkler system, that we're making no warranties regarding the, the, uh, the durability and the, and the life expectancy of that, uh, of that sprinkler system. We do uh, commit that we'll do uh, make our best efforts if anything occurs in the next five years with respect to the sprinkler system, to take whatever action is necessary and as, as quick as possible so as to not disrupt any golf, uh, golf seasons or any golf play. And those are essentially the, the more significant uh, changes. Uh, the, the financial uh, changes were strongly recommended by the Collins Center to be consistent with what other cities and towns uh, have in their in their lease agreements. That all? That's it. I'm not to digest. <laughs> that 91 pages. Um, the point of clarification, um, Steve, is that the sprinkler system Jim refers to as the irrigation system. Right. Mm -hmm. Not not fire sprinklers. Not not the fire sprinklers. Yes. Just, just so I call them sprinklers. Don't they look like sprinklers at Fenway Park? No. no. <laughs> Andy, a question for you. We talked about the $3,000 in the current Gannon budget that is put aside or whatever the terminology is. That's strictly for design work, correct? $32,000. That's, that's just, oh, just $32,000. What was the number of the $300,000 we talked about? Was oh, committed? Th that's for the phase two of the course improvement. So that includes the design work and the actual work? It doesn't. Um, the design work is 32000 which the um, park commissioner has already approved. Right. And the, the 300000 is is kind of a rough number we chose. Okay. Um, okay. It, we're going to see where the design takes us. Okay. Um, I have a question. Do you have to Does the master plan that we've all looked at when this went out the first time, <clears throat> that stays in place? Yes, it does. Yep, yep. Okay, all the, so all that's the good news. All course that improvements are, uh, okay. are for the master plan. Okay, excellent. And that was, you know, going and that ahead. won't change regardless. No, nope, nope. of and, that, and that was the whole point of it. Is so that okay. you know we're pulling towards the same, uh, same goal, same vision. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> if anybody has questions, just uh, throw them out there. Mm -hmm. I've, I've got a few, so but I don't want to step ahead. on anybody's toe. Um, on the snack shack, do we have any kind of an estimate as to what it'll take to bring that into compliance? I do not know. Mm -hmm. I know it, it lacks, um, it lacks a sewer system, and it lacks hot water. Currently. Yep. Mike Donovan and I have had a conversation regarding that. He believes that it, it, the, the successful bidder would probably be wise to, to knock the current snack shack down, bring in a modular unit, and then connect the water and sewer from uh, the clubhouse to the snack shack. He estimates that that cost would uh, uh, would be approximately $100,000. Should we include that in the RFP that the just as a ballpark figure, so people have an idea. I certainly, absolutely, there's an amendment that could certainly be yeah. added in that, est that estimate is, is $100,000, yeah. and hopefully if it is to yeah. cause a reduction in the bid, will be spread out over that. So. Yeah, because uh, GFMI, they're familiar with the situation, but other potential bidders would not be familiar with the information. Right. You know, the that is a perfectly appropriate addition to the ERP. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now, another thing you mentioned was the, the Park Commission to rate the bids. Is that what I heard you say? You are going to be the, the Park Commission will be the evaluation, the evaluating committee. It was somewhat moved uh, five years ago, as there was only one bidder. Uh, but to the extent that there are multiple bids, uh, and even in, if there is only one bid, the, the Park Commission has the right to review these bids. And if they're not satisfied with the bid, they have every right to, to uh, uh, have every right to reject the bid um, uh, and, and uh, put the, put it out to bid again. Speaking with the CFO, he has very strong opinions of what the range the bid should be in. And I believe the CFO, if that did not come into a range that he believed was in the city's best interest, would appear before you and, and make a recommendation that uh, a sole bid be rejected if it, is, it comes in at an artificially low number. Okay. In my uh, 25 years in the Park Commission, we've never been in this position before, so I would like to understand the process a little bit better. Uh, how does it happen? Will we be just the only people on the committee? Will there be some outside help from the purchasing department or should we add a couple people which would help to you know people that have some experience with that kind of stuff I would like to say I can speak uh, for myself and I and can pretty confidently speak that uh, if any department head in City Hall you felt you needed to ask their advice and their opinion they would appear before uh, myself I'm sure Commissioner yeah. Hall Commissioner Donovan the CFO uh, and purchasing agent Leonard would all appear and offer their opinions uh, to any questions you ask. But if you believe it should be expanded, that certainly well, I'm can just, be yours. It can I mean, yours. we've never done it before, so I can see us as, you know, is this done in a public format when we're doing this rating, or is this something that's done in private? How is How are the ratings done? I would, uh, uh, we have uh, the ultimate discretion of how you want to do it. It could be done in an in, in executive session. Uh, the minutes would have to be released af afterwards if, if you wanted to keep that, uh, the, the actual deliberations. But there are probably 20 different valuation criteria that are pretty clearly spelled out. Some as simple as, is your golf, uh, your golf professional have more than X number of years service? And if he does meet that threshold, you would give him the A plus score. Yep. If he has less than that, he, he might be a B plus. Hopefully this has been written in such a way that you'll be able to make a decision uh, what an A, a B, or a C is. Now, it's easy to determine what the, the golf professional's year service. There will be some uh, uh, subjective items here reading the bid, do you believe that the bidder is committed, for example, to try to uh, have non-golfers come up and use it? And it, it would be your reading of the bid. Each member here, do they feel that they've made an adequate uh, commitment and presentation in order to encourage uh, uh, non-golfers to come? So that it would be very subjective. There's no wrong answer in that situation. You may, the same board, you may have a, one opinion that you believe that there's a strong commitment, another one uh, believes that uh, that commitment's just not there. Uh, but that, again, it could be done in an executive session, it could be done with, with the cabinet. All the minutes are going to be released, so the public will know what went through. Um, to the extent that the high bid is not selected, uh, this board would be expected to justify in writing the reasons why, and presumably it would be based upon the, the 20 or so criteria that uh, they just scored poorly. They may have offered the most money, they just didn't have the necessary experience in managing a course, managing a restaurant. Um, it would be almost impossible to for someone that's never run a course, I would suggest that uh, it would be uh, the way this bid is written. If you've never run a course, you should not get this bid. So a lot of it's, 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 it's uh, pretty easy it's easy to understand as you evaluate each individual bid. And you'll see some, hopefully some very professional bids. And um, you may see some bids that uh, just on paper, you just don't have any confidence at all that this is a group that you would feel confident to run the, the gem of the Gannon golf course for the next five years. Okay, in reading through this RFP uh, a few times as I have, um, it seems like there are some, com some components of that which are going to be um, judged by people before it gets to us in terms of the do they meet financial obligations for what they have to do, all that kind of stuff, deposits, all of that kind of stuff? Correct. If, if, yes. So if 10% uh, uh, bid deposit is required, so uh, do, do, do we need to show a, a financial commitment? That would probably be uh, somewhere between forty and fifty thousand dollars in a bond. Uh, there are, I think, approximately ten questions that uh, if you answer no, you wouldn't even make it before you. In one of those questions, okay. have you ever run a golf course? Uh, do you have any experience with a restaurant? Um, and uh, those type of questions would be an automatic disqualifier. So you wouldn't even have to waste your time reading it. Assuming that they have some type of experience in the, in the golf course side and the restaurant side, only then will you get to, uh, to make those evaluation discriminations. As, as you folks know, Gannon is yours. You have the ultimate jurisdiction. That is something that you could def to, to, to uh, defer and, and designate to another board if you feel com comfortable doing. Uh, but uh, this is this is the commission. Only you, not the mayor, not the council, 
uh, determines what this RFP should look like and, and approves it to be submitted. Okay. Anybody come up with a question, Jay? Do you want me to keep going? Keep going. You can keep going. Okay. <laughs> um, Jim, can you talk a little bit about the 35% uh, uh, in lieu of tax thing and explain that? that uh, I'm derelict in not mentioning that. So that the, the insistence of the CFO, uh, he has requested that 35% of whatever the bid is will go into the general fund moving forward. He believes that the $700,000 that is in the existing account and with a commitment that 65% of all uh, proceeds from the uh, bid we stay in that uh, separate account, there, there will be enough uh, sufficient monies in order to move along with the master plan and move along uh, with any necessary repairs. It's not a secret that the city of Lynn is uh, in a tough financial situation and a, and a decision was made by the CFO. And, and I would add, we have a financial overseer, Sean Cronin, who's the deputy commissioner of the uh, Department of Revenue, and last Tuesday, he made a specific point that the city, uh, in order to have a balanced budget for fiscal year 2020, uh, needs to look to, to uh, have better income uh, receipts from both the Gannon Golf Course and the Lynn Auditorium. Uh, they, he believed, looking at the, uh, the numbers that have been used in the past and looking at a budget deficit moving forward, it is vital that both the Auditorium and the Gannon uh, Golf Course concession produce more in uh, revenues uh, moving forward to attempt to balance the city budget. So it is a significant change that what happened in the past. It was a 10 percent, roughly a little over 10 to 12 percent was used the last go around. This would go up to 35 percent. Uh, with the understanding that uh, we didn't have a kitty back in 2013. If there was a problem in 2013, we had to go to the general funds. Uh, there's nothing in the general funds. You guys, uh, this, this account is one of the more flush accounts in the city, and I give credit to the prior administration and this administration not to go to that as a source of uh, balancing the budget. So that, that's why we, that $700,000 is available and why we've been able to spend a million dollars in course improvements over the last five years. So Jim, you believe that this will be formalized in some sort of council action to uh, lock that in at 35 percent? That will be my recommendation and the CFO's recommendation. Uh, this bid uh, calls for it. It certainly could be adjusted if there's a feeling that 35 percent is too much. Uh, in all candor, there was discussion between 25 and 35 percent what the appropriate number was. Ultimately, the CFO believed that uh, the monies that are there and now and the commitment of 65% moving forward with a, with a belief that the bid in all likelihood will go up above the 425 just based on the revenues that uh, have been generated the last five years, which were much higher than what was prior to 2013, that uh, a higher bid would likely be warranted from either the incumbent or, or, or someone else's interest. Okay, and do you think that the current balance in that account will be left as is, or do you think that something will be drawn out of that on the 35% basis, or is that? No, that, that account is a commitment from the CFO. Uh, um, so what's there will stay there? That, that will stay there. And it, with the caveat that maybe, approximately half of that may be drawn down with phase two of the master plan, okay. but that would still leave uh, approximately $350,000, $400,000 available, uh, and that account will grow. Uh, there was a request, a minor request from the CFO uh, that the payments are due May 1st uh, and before July 1st. For accounting purposes, uh, to help balance our budget, he asked for first payment before May 1st, second payment before June 30th, so, so that both checks would hit in the same fiscal year. Uh, that hasn't been a problem in all five years. All the checks have all hit well prior to July 1st. The payments have all been on time. Okay, now we've talked about, you know, with uh, Chris and Steve about uh, going up on rates this year uh, for a number of different reasons, minimum wage going up and all this stuff, and you and I had talked about a cost of living adjustment. So can you explain to the board kind of the philosophy around this part of it? Greg, I, uh, after speaking uh, with the chairman, uh, I reached out to the, the CFO about possibly a cost of living increase component. Uh, the CFO uh, was very satisfied with the last rate increase where the board uh, retained the, the ability to increase the rates on the condition that some portion of that rate increase would go to the city. That may mean in the future a higher rate increase uh, if, if uh, minimum wages go up to a point where uh, the successful bidder comes before us uh, and says that uh, due to unexpected changes in the law uh, that some rate increase is needed. I believe the last time the rates were increased, the board uh, requested that 50% of the rate increases go to the city, 50% go to the, uh, the uh, golf facility management uh, and that the CFO would strongly recommend to the extent that this is being uh, discussed for 2019. After the, the contract signed, 
Uh, that may be something the, the board to consider uh, in, in the December meeting or January meeting uh, with the caveat that uh, they may wish to withhold a certain percentage uh, back for city uses. Uh, I would point out that my understanding with state law is that uh, there have been dates set over the next few years uh, about minimum wage requirements. And I think at some point it maximizes out to $15 an hour. So hopefully all bidders will have you have a little better uh, projections on what their labor costs are going to be because of this gradual minimum wage rate increase that's been set by the state. Okay, now what was the recommendation of the CFO and the law office for when we should look at adjusting these rates? Are they saying we should not adjust them for the 2019 season but go for the 2020 season? When Oh, I, 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 the, the law office and speaking with the CFO, uh, if this board feels it's warranted for the 2019 season, uh, that's perfectly appropriate to do uh, December, as I said, the December-January meeting, uh, but uh, they wanted to leave that to see where the bids came in, and then that may determine uh, what percentage of a rate increase would stay with the city and what percent would go to the successful vendor. The RFP is very, uh, is, it point, states point blank that this park commission reserves the right to the extent, and there's no guarantees it'll ever happen, but to the extent that any rate increases occur over the life of the contract, the, the Park Commission, like it did uh, last year or the year before, reserves the right to, to, to ask for and, and demand and receive a certain percentage of that rate increase. Okay. Uh, Chris, a question for you. Um, if this board so chooses to increase rates, when is the latest that we would be able to do that and not disrupt what happens up at the course? Referring to increases current season or referring to when the bid is due no we're talking about for the if we choose to raise rates for the 2019 golf season when would those need to be approved and in place for a smooth operation up at the golf course if we were running the golf course yes. next year i yes. would have to say prior to march 1st okay so if we approve them as long as they're in place and approved by march 1st then that makes for a smooth operation. ideally february 1st would be better february 1st would be better visit. Maybe shoot February first and then March first the backup plan. We we if if it's a typical traditional New England winter and spring, snow on the ground, we open the facility seven days a week, March first. Start accepting. You know, we start putting the push on, waiting for the warm up. We try to open the golf course on average March fifteenth. Do people uh do like gift memberships or any of that kind of stuff where it's in January? Very, very small yeah. amount. And if it is, it's usually a junior membership. Okay. Um, so we probably won't entertain that this year. If somebody would come in, if we don't know what the status is, not knowing what the bid, the bid schedule is. Okay. You guys got any questions yet? Uh, just a couple things. Um, if, if I read the summary of changes to the RFP, the first one, just in, in regard to any repairs over 10,000 be borne by a successful bidder and not city up from 5,000. Page 29, 19.0 uh, on maintenance. If, if you read sort of the last few sentences there, where it says the management firm will not be responsible for major structural repairs to roofs, exterior walls, irrigation systems, heating, plumbing, plantings, furniture, fire control, and on and on or foundations when the cost of any such repair exceeds $10,000. So if there are repairs over $10,000, the, the successful bidder is going to pay for those? Anything over $10,000 is the city's responsibility. If the bid costs are below $10,000, then the, the... That is up from the $5,000. Is that what it was in the previous? Correct. Yes. Okay, got it. Um, and it was relatively smooth, just for a uh, point of information. Yeah, early on there, there was some uh, back and forth about whether uh, 20 sprinkler heads were broken, whether you had all 20 sprinkler heads uh, to get you over the 5,000. We worked it out very well that, okay. the, that the city, that we're looking at every sprinkler head as, as, as an individual unit that's, that's broken. So that I, can, uh, I was pleased that uh, in the last five years there was no unnecessary bickering over this amount, and it worked out very well. And then the last thing on the, on the Snack Shack, is the Snack Shack re, um, remaining mandatory as written right now it is it is, it is uh is mandatory it, it states that uh, the successful bidder is expected prior to the start of the golf season to have a, a snack shack that complies with the sanitary code and i leave it to i will if, if, the, if the motion is made i will include the hundred thousand dollar estimate from mike Sullivan. so if, if one says i don't want to make it compliant because i don't want it 
the way this reads, it just says it must make it compliant. So the snapshot has to be there, and it must be compliant. That is correct, as, as written, yes. Okay. With the feeling that uh, it offers something to the golfers, uh, an amenity that the golfers enjoy. But that is something that if, if that would probably result in an increased bid. Uh, that's a $100,000 cost yeah. that is, is not, and that's certainly something the board could consider uh, deleting, that if the, the uh, owner's option, I, I, that, that's a perfectly appropriate uh, amendment to this lease if, if that's the desire of the board. I'll keep going, keep going. Uh, find not, yeah, I'll find some. Yeah. Carry on. Uh, Jim, one more on the uh, top of page 78. I think we chatted a little bit about it today, about the cost of general repairs, pipe breaks, broken, lost nozzle, all that kind of stuff, replacement parts of the main controller and pumping components. Did we clear up what pumping components those are? Are they part of the irrigation system or are they part of something else? I'm sorry, this is the planting? No, this is on page 78. The very top, that first five or six lines right there. I think you're looking at a different uh, version, because I, I think I may have sent you three different versions today. It's a section under parts. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry? The section under parts. Right, they're right on top there. I wasn't sure what the control or any other stuff was. Referring to what, what that is part of Andy, do you have any um, idea? This was a um, It's under parts. So, the concern that you have given, so I believe you do, because after our discussion it, uh, this morning, I added. Just after winterization. So, uh, that you may pick it up. Oh, okay, so maybe. You would ask to include, uh, to make it clear, that any irrigation issues below 10,000. Uh, okay, all right. So, that was suggested. Uh, check, uh, correct it. Okay, you so I get an older copy. Okay. Yes. Never mind. <laughs> you received a fast and furious today. I know I did. That's what yeah, I did. That's what yeah. I did. Yeah. I think they had some further that's revisions. Yeah. And the, most of those were mm -hmm. suggestions from Tim Leonard, a purchasing agent, to take out things that he thought were unnecessary uh, that are in standard bid contracts or were in bids five years ago but with yeah. changes of uh, under the bidding laws yeah. uh, not needed. We had talked about a dress code. Chris, let me ask you a question, Steve. Uh, do you have a dress code up there, something that's it's in it's in paper, it's policy up there? It's printed on a um, sign behind the counter. Okay. Do you think that that's something that needs to be in this RFP just as an outside looking in thing? It, it wouldn't hurt if it was, it, if it was in there, but I mean, most it, qualified bidders are going to be used to and familiar with a dress code at public facility. Okay. You know, I mean, you, you can put it in if you want. Um, you know, we try to require a college shirt to do our goal. And that was something that the members came up with, I'd say about 15, 20 years ago. They, they wanted Guess I wouldn't make it up there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Most public golf courses don't require a college shirt. Yeah. You know, so it's more that the, uh, the members kind of please themselves and try, yep. to, okay. try to keep it. I so put most people that adhere to it, it's not a major For a point of information, after my discussion with you really today, I did add that. I wish I could tell you exactly where, but it does state okay. that if a dress code is going to be implemented, the Park Commission would just sign off on it. Yeah. So there is language. Probably good to have a policy approved by the Park Commission. Can we? Okay, I think I got one more question. And uh, the point of sales, right now, do we have that on the registers uh, in the bar, in the, in the restaurant, or is it just down at the pro shop? It's everywhere? The bar has a point of sales system as well. So what do they have, like codes that they put in for different drinks? They ring it in and... It's a, uh, you know, touch, touch screen. Yeah. It's a message came for Okay, so it's programmed well, into the screen all the, and you... All the prices are pre-programmed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Just minor. Snow and ice removal during the snow season? Uh, it's the responsibility of the... Uh, yeah, of towards the, the end. successful bidder to plow salt in mm -hmm. uh, the parking lot and that delivery area. And do you guys maintain the island? Oh, it's superior. Small one. Yeah, I don't know if we do. I don't know if we're required to, but we do, yes. Are they required to? I don't know. It's not per this lease. Mm -hmm. No. Not per the old lease or this lease. They get started because the sign used to be there. So we used to put flowers in the sign, got run over a couple times. We moved the sign over to the other, the other side of the island. So we still mow the island and keep it presentable. 
The only last request I would have is after this is formalized and there's a RFP accepted that we have a table of contents with this so we can look <laughs> through this umpteen pages to find things efficiently. Because I know with the oldies that was a bit of an issue finding stuff, you know, so. Yeah, I did, I was remiss, there was one other uh, uh, change here. Uh, I, I think there was a desire by many people to have this bid out much sooner than it was for various reasons. Obviously, uh, uh, it's been a bit, very busy uh, season for the for, uh, elected and appointed officials uh, being done with the budget. This lease is a five-year lease with an option for the city and the successful bidder to extend for one year. So if it is deemed in 2023, hopefully it'll be out in sufficient time that everyone's satisfied, uh, but it does, a, it does permit a one-year extension. Uh, okay. So if, if, if we believe it's in the city's best interest to do the one-year extension, and the successful bidder uh, is willing to go at terms at equal to year five, that is an option in, under this uh, RFP. Okay. Attorney Lamont, could you talk about uh, smoking and the, the, the crazy word these days, marijuana smoking up there, how that works in a setting like in. I assume smoking is it's got to be permitted out on the golf course. Um, any mention of marijuana smoking, has it been issues up there? It is not uh, mentioned in this lease. Uh, the Board of Health has regulations that uh, marijuana is not allowed in public places. Uh, and this would include vapes uh, and the traditional joints from Cheech and Chong. Um, uh, so this would be prohibited under our current Board of uh, Health regulations. Uh, and it may, maybe it's a friendly amendment that, that, that some language in there that the bidder would be expect, expected to, uh, to enforce these provisions may be, may be appropriate. Yeah. Uh, Anything else? Any questions down here? So Jim, what, uh, what would be the wording of a motion you would need from us? Uh, I think it would be a motion to, to uh, to accept this RFP with any amendments, I think we talked about one amendment referencing the hundred thousand. Yeah. Uh, another amendment uh, 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 just discussed uh, what the, the successful bidder is expected to enforce. Uh, there is language in there, I should say, that the successful bidder is expected to enforce all local state laws. Right. So yeah. that probably is in there under that. Yeah. Um, and I can try to remember in the last half hour. Did I? Was there any other issues that were discussed that would be appropriate amendments? I don't remember, but you did say earlier that even though this RFP is going to be made available tomorrow or advertised tomorrow, that if there are things that come up, you can still put addendums on the agreement as late as November 30th. Correct. And that's, that's exactly what uh, happened uh, uh, five years ago. Uh, there was a pre, we'll have a pre-bid conference on November 13th at 10 o'clock at Gannon. Success, uh, potential bidders will go and will be able to ask myself, uh, Commissioner Hall, you've been invited just now. Uh, Commissioner Donovan and, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, Presiding Agent Leonard. There were questions that uh, were posed five years ago that we felt were not adequately addressed in the RFP itself. And we came back and we discussed it with the Park Commission. Uh, did, you have, did you have a feeling on whether you wanted this or that that may not be in there? That, uh, I think the, the cannabis issue is resolved somewhere else in the bid. But if that question came up, I'd report back to the board and see if, uh, how they wanted to deal with it. Okay. And uh, so, yes, right up to November 30th, the uh, additional agenda can come up, and they would probably... Snow and Ice was not dealt with five years ago, so that no, was one, the question, one of the first questions uh, the bid had said, who's going to be responsible? It was the POC, it was the POC Commission direction, though we expect uh, the bidder to be responsible. So those type of questions are very likely to occur again uh, after the pre-bid conference on the 13th. Okay, so what do you need <clears throat> for wording from us for, for the RFP, for a vote? A vote? A uh, motion to uh, accept this RFP to be released uh, to tomorrow, October 31st, uh, in the purchasing office at 8.30. And to the extent that you want to reference the potential $100,000 cost in the SNAP Shack, shack uh, that could be a, a separate motion. And I will immediately run across the street, add that, and send that down to Tim Lennon. So you'll have it ready for any prospective bidder to come and get it. Well, we can say the vote contingent on the items we discussed, too. So unless you want a separate motion, would you prefer a second motion? On no, that? then be, with the items discussed, yeah. that would be okay. perfectly appropriate. April, you got all that? Mm -hmm. You're shaking your head up and down. But I'm sure Attorney Lamana will help you out. I hope I'm getting a recorded copy of this day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, if there's... Uh, I will make a motion. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, is there any further discussion on the motion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye.